Hi, this is Cassandra from Homeschool Peace. In front of me today is all the materials that I'm going to be using with my fifth grader, third grader, and second grade student this upcoming fall. Since there's so much material in front of me right now, I'm going to be breaking this video up over three smaller videos with today's video just on my fifth grader's material. So if you do have that third grader or the second grade student and some of this material looks interesting to you, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you will be notified when I post those additional videos. So let's go ahead and jump right in to language arts for fifth grade. There can be a lot of pieces to language arts, so I'm gonna be stepping you through the different materials I use and why I use it. The first that I would sort of consider as my core of my language arts is Logic of English. And we are currently in, for fifth grade, Logic of English Essentials. And he is currently working on the Essentials Level C. Now within these books, there are three different levels, A, B, and C. And you typically start with level A or B and you go through units one through 30. And once you're done with those units, then you can start back again at that higher level. Now he already completed the essentials program at that B level. So this school year for fourth grade, he's currently been in essentials level C. So next year, we're just gonna pick up right where we leave off for this school year and just keep going with essentials level C. Now in essentials, we're covering things like reading, vocabulary, grammar, and spelling and definitely with this level C that we've been in we've been really studying deep into a lot of different things with vocabulary and morphemes so next let's go ahead and take a look at what I use for creative writing for this past school year, we started using Write Shop for the first time for creative writing. My son had really not been introduced to creative writing up until this current school year. He has had different type of writing assignments, definitely mixed in with Logic of English, using the Logic of English Essential Reader. There's some activities they have to do with writing down some information and finding keywords and things like that. But he hasn't really worked on creative writing, which is why we introduced Write Shop. Now for Write Shop, um, uh, this particular program is takes a total of 10 different writing projects spread out over the school year. And some of the writing projects include like a humorous story, it could include fiction, nonfiction, poetry, book reports, different things like that. But it's taking everything to the next level than what we are currently doing this year, adding some more depth to those lessons. And he has really done well with Write Shop. It's been a really great fit for our family and really does work well with Logic of English. I feel like now that we have been using Logic of English more on the vocabulary and spelling and grammar, this part with Write Shop, it sort of helps us add that a little extra piece of creative writing. So now let's take a look at what we're using for handwriting practice. For handwriting, we're using a reason for handwriting. In my family, we like to spend some time in God's word and this particular program is a Bible-based program that the uh, words that the kids practice every single day leads up to a Bible verse that they will write by the end of the week. Now, my kids go through first before they touch this book, they go through the Logic of English Rhythm of Handwriting program. So my son has already completed the Rhythm of Handwriting program. He actually went through it two times to really sort of strengthen those cursive writing skills. And so he started using the reason for handwriting this current school year. And so he's just moving to the the next level, which is level E, and he's going to be copying and writing down and practicing uh, Bible verses from the book of Psalms. And that's what we use for handwriting. So now let's go ahead and take a look at what we use for literature as well as reading itself to add some literature into our days as well as just practicing reading. I use the reading guides through Sunlight. They have a reader schedule as well as books that they recommend for the students to read. I love using Sunlight to help me pick out great books for my kids to read. Books that I don't always think to pull off the shelf and it introduces them to really a variety of topics. And what I love about these books as well, especially as my son has been getting older in that for say fifth grade now, level is that he can go off on his own and read these chapter books and the study guide that comes with it or you know reader's guide you should say has questions as well as a schedule included and so I can know when should he be reading what books what chapters how to keep the pacing where we need to be as well as the questions so when he comes back after reading on his own I can ask him the questions and make sure that he actually did complete the reading and didn't just sort of quickly scan through the pages that he actually knows what he read 
as well as it does have some vocabulary words that I can review with him. So I really do appreciate Sunlight picking out these books for me, and that's what I sort of add in as our complete language arts program. Next up is math, and here in our home we use Matthew C, and we've been using Matthew C for a while. We started way back at the primer level and just have moved up every single level. And this next level for this coming year for my son for fifth grade is Zeta. Now my son, um, he has been currently working at the Epsilon level this year, and in Epsilon we've been really working on fractions, which sort of brings us right into this next new level, which is Zeta. And Zeta focuses on dec decimals and percentages. And really starts working through some of the skills needed to be able to move into pre-algebra. And with each set, you get the teacher's book, you get a student workbook, tests, as well as a DVD. I love the DVD. They are taught by Mr. Steve Demi. You can put the video in, watch the lesson with your students, sort of kick off that lesson, and then you go through the materials and practice pages with your student. Also with the Zeta level, which is recommended, is this new set, which can work with your Math UC blocks. If you're used to Math UC blocks, but this new set of manipulatives have some pieces and some larger squares and some new red blocks that are used for being able to really show and explain decimals. So we'll definitely be using this new set, and this set can actually be used as well in the uh, pre-algebra level. So we'll be using this for Zeta as well as moving into pre-algebra. So we'll be using this along with the material for our Matthew C level this coming year. For history, we've been using Masterbooks America Story. I started with America Story from Masterbooks when my son was in third grade, and we did America Story 1. This current school year for fourth grade, America Story 2, and now we're just going to be moving into the next level, which is America Story 3. And it basically just jumps right in on where we've been at on this large American timeline, starting from with America Story 1 back with Early Explorers, and now we've moved through time to now this this one starts right at the turn of the century. This particular book is going to really spend some time in World War I, World War II, the Cuban Missile Crisis, the Cold War. It's going to go into through time up until even the terrorist attacks of 9-11 and ends right around the election of 2016. So one of the books you get is this first one, which is the, the book you read aloud to your student. And then there is a teacher's guide. It's called Teacher's Guide, but really these are the student workbook pages. And then I also love picking up their timeline um, images and we cut those out and put in our timeline book. Now with this material, I really love how this book is written. It is written in more of a Charlotte Mason style, which is going to really give a narrative to the student, um, sort of this uh, the feelings and emotions that are brought into these time periods and really getting them to really think about what was going on when these historical events took place. With sort of that same feel of learning goes into this teacher's guide. So those student pages that they work on, um, every single lesson they spend some time drawing, they do some copy work, copying down some you know important quotes or scripture verses. And there's sort of like this piece of it that it's not just all sort of book work and answer some questions. I really do love the activity pages and even the geography pages included with in this student book. And that's what we're working on for America Story 3. In our home, we take more of a one-room schoolhouse approach to science, and we use the Good and the Beautiful Science Unit so I can gather all my kids together and study the same science topics. The first one that we're going to be covering is birds from the good and the beautiful. Now this unit is set up more of their older style unit, which what I mean by that is it is shrink wrap, loose pages. It's going to require some prep work to get it ready for this upcoming school year. Over this past year, the good and the beautiful has been redesigning uh, their science units and releasing them in a very different style. They are smaller teacher guide and they're bound. So they're sort of a little bit more open and go style. And then their student books are are in you know, full color, easy pages already ready to go. And so this new style is definitely very different than the older style units, but I'll definitely be using both this year since birds has been a topic that we've wanted to cover. Along with birds, I did pick up their book pack, the uh, Birdsong Study Book, as well as Mission Migration. 
Over to the next unit that we're going to be covering is going to be the motions and simple machines. And I should say, most of these science units for my family, we've been doing science every single day. Now that my kids are a little bit older and when doing science every day, we're normally getting done with our uh, science units in every quarter. So we're able to do about four science units over the course of the year. So this first one will be our first quarter. Second quarter, we're going to move to motions and simple machines. I did get the, it's that newer style with the bound teacher's book. I do have journals for each of my kids, as well as I did pick up their book pack, and there is motions in sports, as well as the story of invention. The other thing that I did pick up to sort of sprinkle in throughout the course of the school year is their new safety book. I have the older safety book, and that's what I've been using this year. It's sort of that, again, before the new redesign. So I picked up the new one, which does have some other types of topics and just different information that wasn't included in the first safety. So I'll sprinkle these throughout the, the whole calendar year so that by the end of the year, we've finished this book. Now, I've only showed you uh, units that I'm gonna be completing for the first and second quarter. I like to keep things a little bit flexible because The Good and the Beautiful lately has been releasing new units units throughout the school year. And I like to keep myself a little flexible in case a new one pops up that looks really exciting. And then I can add it in for say third quarter or fourth quarter. So at least I have the beginning part of this you know, school year buttoned up and the other ones I'll figure out as I go through the school year. The last thing to share, and this one, I'm only doing this with my fifth grade student, not with my second or third grader, and I'll make sure I do this in a sort of a separate private time with him, is their maturation and sexual reproduction unit. It's a small unit, and I definitely won't be using every single lesson, but we're definitely hitting that point in fifth grade that I wanna make sure I pull some of the topics, some of the uh, information for some changes coming up that I will be able to share with him. So I'll be adding this in in our our sort of second quarter and spending a little bit of time just going through some of the information with included in here. And that's what we use for our science units. The last topic is electives. And the first elective that I'm gonna be continuing with my students is typing Com. That's what we've been using for our typing program and it's been working really well. So I love having a program available that I can, you know, set one of my students up on their typing program while I can spend maybe that five, 10 minutes that I need really working with another student on a different subject. And so we'll be just continuing that in the fall, going to their next level and being able to really just work and practice their typing skills. The other elective that we're gonna be starting for this uh, upcoming fall is Spanish. I haven't yet introduced any type of foreign language in our home. We're going to be using Song School Spanish Book One. This is from Classical Academic Press. And with this particular book, it is designed for kindergarten through third grade. And why I'm using this program first is I wanted to have a program that all my students can do together. And my youngest student, who's actually in second grade this year, I wanted her to be able to be at a point that she was ready for us to introduce a foreign language in our home and not to have any type of confusion since we were obviously working previously on English skills. So I feel like we're hitting a point now that she's you know moving into second grade that she can write and be able to do some copy work and work in this workbook for Spanish. So it has a student workbook. The student workbook also has a CD in the back that has some practice songs. There is a DVD that I did pick up. This DVD sort of kicks off the lesson and does have a teacher sort of instruction before the lesson begins, which can be really helpful if you don't speak this language, as well as a teacher's book. The teacher's book gives the answers to the student pages as well as additional activity pages. So I'm really excited to introduce Spanish to my kids this year. I hope you enjoyed going through all this material for my fifth grade student. Now, if you see some things on this table that I didn't get to go through yet, those will be coming up for my third grade student and my second grade student. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you will be notified when I do post those additional videos. And if you do have any comments or questions, I'd love to hear from you. Just leave those comments below and thank you for watching. Goodbye.